We're with snowboard silver medalist Neven Gaumarini in school Switzerland, investigating the balance, speed and technique required for slalom. You only have one edge on the snowboard. To be able to carve down slushy, icy slopes, whatever, you have to have a very good and very precise technique. To me, the perfect carve is when you are able to turn, but you're not losing speed, you're actually gaining speed. Whatever you are doing with the board, you should always stay in center of the board. That's, I think, the most important point. It's also how you initiate the turn. If you want to initiate the turn, then you have to come a little bit forward. That means that you put your weight a little bit more in front. So it's a movement back forward. And the next thing what is important is when you work with your legs, for example, you start to put the edge of the board with your legs and with a little bit with your heap on the edge. And the upper body goes always in the opposite direction. When we talk about front side, we can very easily use our knees. So the knees help me to be more upright with my upper body. But when I do a backside, obviously I cannot bend my knees this way, so I need my hips. And this uh, changes all the technique. If you do perfect turns, then the middle where you change from one edge to the other, it's like flying. Unlike snowboarding's freestyle alternative, Stance and body position on the board in slalom racing is designed for speed and power. Here, Galmarini demonstrates the best free carving practices with onboard commentary. The upper body is always more upright than the legs. Also, when it's steep, keep the upper body high. Not too much pressure on your front foot. 50-50. And now, flat, push, feel the turns, push, yeah. Knees down, hips down, knees down, hips, knees, hips, knees, yeah. Stay in the middle of your snowboard. Along with good technique comes angulation, the degree a snowboard's edge cuts the snow at. It plays a critical role in creating the speed in and out of corners and is vital for finding the racing line. The angulation gives you the possibility to make the turn uh, closer or to open the turn. So if you have more angulation, then you have more pressure on the edge. That means that the board starts a very short and, and closed turn. If you have less, then you go more straight. So with the angulation, you start or you can influence your turns, if they are short ones or wider ones. It also depends on the steepness of the slope. If it's very steep, you want to do short turns so you don't get too fast and you cannot control it anymore. If you want to do wider turns or smaller turns, then it depends. I like the rounder line, so I'm able to, to push every turn and gain speed or you can also go the straighter line then maybe you don't push as much but you do maybe the shortest line from top to bottom. In a parallel slalom race athletes are head-to-head -head over two timed runs. The winner has the quickest combined total. Galmarini gives us insight into carving during a race scenario. Always looking ahead trying to be precise but quick. First skates are easy, easy straight, easy, easy, oh, and uh, turning now. Ah. Okay, keep my body above the board. Hard turn, hard turn. Finish early. Wow, wow, good. Making speed, speed now. Yes. Whew. Yeah, that was all right. Not bad. I've lost several races with less than five hundredths of a second difference. And when you lose that close, you're not taking any chances next time. Equipment must be 100% perfect. Every turn needs to be perfect. It starts with waxing, edge tuning. You decide between one degree or two degrees or three degrees. And then every turn, you know, you can if you think back, 
gaining one or two hundredths of a second, you think it's easy, but to do it, that's the other thing. <laughs>